welcome to this proof of concept video. Today the goal is to describe the Euclidean algorithm with a visual approach, so it's intuitive enough that you can always figure it out and use it even if you've forgotten it. Please, please don't ever use mnemonics and memorization when you're learning math. That may get you through a quiz, maybe, but it's useless beyond that, and if you rely on it regularly you actually gradually accumulate a deficit in the creative thinking skills that you really need, and math gets harder and harder to keep up with. So instead, to really internalize mathematics, it's important to build it for yourself. The placing of the building blocks in your mind using your own muscles is what you learn from. So the point today is to guide you to build the Euclidean algorithm for yourself in a visually striking way so that you'll always be able to recreate it for yourself, no memorization involved. So we'll use visual, visual intuition today, but check out our next video for a different fun and famous visualization of the algorithm in action once you're more familiar with it. We've already talked about the GCD, or greatest common divisor of two integers. It's the largest integer that's a factor or divisor of the two that you've got. So, for example, the GCD of 15 and 12 is the biggest integer dividing both of them, namely 3. If you'd like a primer on how to think about the GCD, check out our other videos via the links below. But in brief, I'll assume that we're used to thinking about the GCD in terms of the prime factorization of two integers. That's why I've shown the factorizations of 12 and 15 here, so that you can see the three sitting in there as the biggest, and in fact the only, thing they have in common. For one more example, the GCD of these two medium big integers is easy to determine because I've handed them to you in factored form. You just have to pick out the common factors and keep those. So I can go prime by prime. So here I can grab a single 2, two 3s, 1 5, and 1 7. Somehow in my head these prime factors are building blocks, and if we put both of the castles that they form on top of one another, the GCD is the common part, it's the overlap. So taking a GCD of factored integers is easy, but as you may have heard, factoring integers is a challenge. We don't have any efficient methods to factor big integers. In fact, we've based much of the security of the internet on the assumption that no one in the world knows a clever, fast way to factor big integers. If someone did, they could upend the entire world overnight. So you might expect it to be difficult to take a GCD without factoring. But what we'll see today is that, surprisingly, there's a very fast algorithm to compute the GCD. It's called the Euclidean algorithm, and dates back many thousands of years. I think of it as one of the first, most fundamental algorithms in mathematics. It's kind of striking that it's even possible, and yet it's actually very simple. We begin by imagining that you have two big numbers. Here they are, on screen, as two piles of stones. You want to take the GCD, but you don't even want to count all those stones, never mind factor the result. So, now here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to compute the GCD of these two numbers like I'm playing some sort of children's game. Okay, I'm going to show you the rules and go through the process without telling you why it works, yet anyway, and you can see if you can catch the trick. So let's call these pile A and pile B. I'm going to manipulate and change them, but they'll always be pile A on the left and pile B on the right. First, I'm going to look for copies of pile A inside pile B. I can see two of them here. There's nothing special about the positioning of the stones, I'm just going to count out enough stones to call it a copy of pile A, and then I can see that I can actually do it twice without running out of stones. So there are two copies of A inside B. Then the rules of the game are that once I've found a copy of the smaller pile in the bigger one, I can subtract it off, by which I mean just remove the stones. So I subtract one copy of A and then another copy of A, and then what's left I'll call the new pile B. So now B is the smaller one, so I look for copies of B inside A. I think I can count off at least one copy of B, so I subtract it off and I'm left with a new pile A. Now A is smaller, so I look for copies of A inside B. And I see two of them. I subtract each of them off in turn, and that gives me a new pile B. Now notice how quickly the piles get small with this process. They're very small now but I can do it one more time, perhaps. Let me identify a copy of B inside A and subtract it off. Now I have two small piles. They're so small that I can see that they have three stones each without even bothering to count. Now here's the trick. I claim the GCD of the original two pile sizes is the same as the GCD of the diminished pair of pile sizes. So the GCD I'm looking for is the GCD of three and three, which is pretty clearly three. So does it really work? Here's the actual pile sizes. They were 21 and 54. Factoring these, I can see that, indeed, they have a GCD of 3. 
So it does seem to work, at least in this example. I claim it always works if you follow the process that I demonstrated. Okay, so why does it work? I'll show you the secret with a visual trick in a moment, but I encourage you to stop the video right now and ponder, why does this work? Go ahead, pause and ponder. It'll stay with you so much longer if you figure it out for yourself. Okay, I hope you have a guess or an idea about why this might work, because once I show you with a visual what's going on, you'll never have this opportunity to figure it out for yourself again. Do you want to pause a little longer? Go ahead. Okay, fine. So you want to see my secret. So here it is. I'm going to silently step through the process again, but this time with a tiny little something added on top of the visual. Did it click? I drew little triangles over the stones to group them into threes. This represents the fact, the fact that the number is divisible by three. So remember the GCD was three, meaning that this is possible. Both piles are made up of an integer number of groups of three. So now watch as I step through again how the process I described never breaks up a group of three. If a pile is divisible by three, you can subtract off some number of threes. So what's left is still a multiple of three. So watch it happen again. So this is a an example of a cool, useful paradigm in mathematics. If you have a tough problem, replace it with an easier problem that has the same answer. So in our case, the trick is to replace the GCD of A and B, that's the tough problem, with the GCD of A and B minus A, that's the easier problem. Those are the smaller piles. So the answers are the same, but the new problem is simpler, is, is simpler to deal with. So that's the Euclidean algorithm. Just keep simplifying the problem by subtracting one pile of stones from the other until the answer is just obvious. So I hope this explanation will stick with you and allow you to rediscover the Euclidean algorithm anytime you forget it. I'm going to use the rest of this video to formalize the algorithm and make it a little faster. So first we'll write down the algorithms as presented, then we'll use a trick to speed it up, and then we'll write it down again. That's its more well-known form. And then we'll finish off with an example. All right, so remember, the core of our algorithm was this. The GCD of A and B is the same as the GCD of A and B minus A. So here's a proof of that fact, but it's a little bit boring. This type of formalism is important, but the picture proof is so much more visceral in this case. So you can pause the video if you'd like to enjoy a little logical walk in the park, and otherwise, let's move on. The algorithm is basically the following. Subtract the smaller from the larger of your, par of your pair until you can't do it anymore. If you want to write it out for a computer, though, we might write it out a bit more carefully like this. Start with the pair AB, where A is the smaller one. If the two entries are non-zero, then we're going to replace AB with the pair A and B minus A. Then we will swap the order, if needed, so that the first entry is um, the smaller one. And then we'll loop back and repeat, so that we'll keep doing this over and over. If at some point you fail the test that both entries are non-zero, so in other words, you come across a zero in your pair, then you're done. The non-zero entry is the GCD. So I've used zero as a marker to figure out when to stop. So in my visual version, I stopped at the pair three, three, if you recall, but if I subtract one from the other again, I would get a zero. So zero is just a convenient way to figure out when you've done enough work. Okay, also a quick reminder here about taking a GCD with zero. So the GCD of n with 0 is n. Why is that? Well, because 0 is weird. Everything divides 0. The definition of divides, that's what's in the lower left here, says that a divides b if b is a multiple of a. So, well, 0 is a multiple of anything, since 0 times n is 0. So, for example, 0 is 0 threes, so it's a multiple of 3. It's 0 fours, so it's a multiple of 4. So, bizarrely, I think of 0 as being kind of an infinite castle of blocks. All right. So the next question is, how do we know it will end? Why does it work? Well, the numbers keep getting smaller at every stage. And they stay non-negative, since you always take the smaller from the larger. But at the same time, they can't keep getting smaller forever, since there's only finitely many non-negative integers, smaller than what we started with. So it's kind of climbing down a ladder that ends. So how does it end? Well, we must meet the case that one of them becomes zero. That's the only way it can end. 
So you'll notice that I did call this the slow Euclidean algorithm. So for example, you did notice that the example that we did, we actually took two copies of pile A out of pile B. And in the algorithm, as I just presented it, these are two separate steps. So I encourage you to pause here and think about how we might do this more efficiently, and then continue the video after you've given it a little bit of thought. Okay, how might we make it more efficient? So we'll use what's called the division algorithm, which is just the observation that given an A and a B, with B bigger than the A, we can write B as some number of A's plus R, where R is the remainder, which is somewhere between 0 and A minus 1. The Q stands for quotient. This is the output you get from the good old-fashioned division algorithm that you learned in school. So for example, 1016 is made up of 203 copies of 5 with a remainder of 1. So importantly, it's efficient to determine Q more efficient than subtracting off copies of A repeatedly until you can't anymore. Okay, you did this in, in, in grade school. So I won't go into the division algorithm at the moment, but just trust that we can find Q and R fairly quickly because you did it over and over and over by hand as a kid. So now we can speed up the Euclidean algorithm. The key idea is that instead of repeatedly subtracting A, we just do it in one step. So that is we're going to replace A B with A and B minus Q A, which is actually just A and then the remainder R. So R is smaller than A, and we're already ready to start removing copies of R from A at that point. Okay, so here's the usual not slow version of the Euclidean algorithm, its classic um, version. We begin with a pair A and B, where A is the smaller. If the two entries are non-zero, then we write B as AQ plus R using the division algorithm. So some number of copies of A um, with a remainder of R. Then we replace a b with r a, so r is now the smaller one, so I'm going to stick it in the front, and then we loop back and we just keep repeating. And if at any point one of the entries of our pair is zero, then we're done. Ta-da! Okay, so now I have a challenge for you. Compute the GCD of 180 and 196. So go ahead and pause the video, use the algorithm as it is on the screen, and come back when you've done it. We're back. Okay, so here's how it went for me. So I began with a pair 180 and 196. 196 is bigger, so I wrote it as some number of 180s plus a remainder, which turned out to be 16. That gives me a new pair, which is 16 and 180. I wrote the larger 180 as some number of 16s. It actually took 11 of them, uh, with a remainder of 4. That gives me a new pair, 4 and 16. 16 is 4 4s with a remainder of 0. My new pair is 0 and 4, but that has a 0 in it, so we're done. The GCD is just the other entry, the 4. Notice that you see the 4 right here as the last non-zero remainder. Okay, that's it. That's the Euclidean algorithm. Here, for comparison, is the slow Euclidean algorithm. We definitely don't want to do that. And that's the Euclidean algorithm. In the next video, I'll visualize the Euclidean algorithm in a totally different way, um, which is useful for exploring its efficiency.